Hi, I'm Howard Wetzman. I'm the Chief Medical Officer of Townsend. I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about the neurobiology of addiction. We'll get right to it. There are two main elements to addiction, no matter what drug or behavior the person is using in the illness. These are lack of control when using and the inability to stay stopped when not using. We have a hard time seeing this as illness because both of these things look voluntary. All you see is somebody taking something they shouldn't be taking or taking too much of something they ought to take less of. Another reason it's hard to see addiction as an illness is that no one can see the part that doesn't work. There's no x-ray with a broken bone. There's no blood test with an out-of-whack glucose level. So what I'm going to do today is show you the broken bone of addiction. It all starts in a part of the brain called the midbrain. Here's your brain. Here's the outer layer called the cortex. It's the thinking part of your brain. It's the part that makes us human. But it's really just a thin stocking cap on the outside of your brain. And like a nice looking cap, it's something you're proud of and don't mind showing off. But under that cortex are the parts that maybe aren't so civilized and nice looking. If we take off the cap of the cortex, we're a little bit embarrassed by what we find. While you may not want to show off your midbrain to your neighbor, it's the part that keeps you alive. And through most of the history of the human race, staying alive has been much more important than looking civilized. So the midbrain actually has more practice at what it does than the cortex does. And it's much more powerful. For our purposes today, we'll start our tour of the midbrain with a group of cells called the ventral tegmental area. Like most brain cells, the cells of the ventral tegmental area send messages to other groups of cells using chemicals called neurotransmitters. The neurotransmitter that the ventral tegmental area uses is called dopamine. The ventral tegmental area, or let's call it the VTA, the VTA sends dopamine to another group of cells called the nucleus accumbens. And when the nucleus accumbens sees enough dopamine, it knows that all the necessities of life, like safety, food, shelter, are taken care of, and it can tell the rest of the brain to go about its business of thinking great thoughts. But if there isn't enough dopamine at the nucleus accumbens, we can't concentrate on great thoughts. In fact, we have difficulty concentrating at all, or even remembering where we put our keys. We have a sense that we're missing something, but can't quite find it. We have a tendency to look around restlessly for that thing. Something else that goes along with enough dopamine at the nucleus accumbens is called hedonic tone. That's a fancy name for how much you're able to enjoy life. With enough dopamine at the nucleus accumbens, life is enjoyable. Without it, not much is enjoyable, and we're mostly just irritated by how much everyone else seems to be enjoying their life. Another function of dopamine at the nucleus accumbens is reward. When dopamine hits the nucleus accumbens, we feel a sense of reward and know that whatever we're doing at the time is a good thing that we should do more of. When we don't have enough dopamine, normal things aren't rewarding and we lose motivation for most things. When we find something that does boost our dopamine for a bit, it doesn't last. So we can never find a place of contentment. Summing up about the nucleus accumbens and dopamine, we can say restless, irritable, and discontented. These symptoms of low dopamine tone at the nucleus accumbens are the reason it's so hard to stay stopped in addiction. But remember, we not only have to explain why people in addiction can't stay stopped, we also have to explain why they can't control their use once they start. The answer lies in what else happens at the nucleus accumbens. When the nucleus accumbens sees a hit of dopamine, it sends another neurotransmitter back to the VTA asking for more dopamine. The neurotransmitter that the nucleus accumbens uses is called endorphin, the brain's opioid. When endorphin is released at the ventral tegmental area, more dopamine is released at the nucleus accumbens, causing more endorphin release, and on and on until all the dopamine that was lined up and ready to go is gone. The dopamine level then crashes, and we start looking for the next hit. This positive feedback loop between the VTA and the nucleus accumbens is the reason for compulsive use in addiction. So there are two main elements to addiction, lack of control when using and lack of ability to stay stopped. And they both have biological mechanisms. But it's equally important to understand that these biological mechanisms can have genetic influences. The details of that would be a whole other talk. But what's important here is that these biological changes can be there even if the person does nothing wrong. You can be born this way. The other thing to note from this talk is that drugs aren't in it. What's important is the dopamine.
and we can get a hit of dopamine from a lot of things, not just drugs and alcohol.